In this video, I wanna talk about Microsoft's employee benefits in 2024 and what you can do to maximize them as an employee. Now, Microsoft offers a very generous benefits package and that gives you a lot of financial planning opportunities to take advantage of. My name is Scott Caulfield. I'm a CPA and a CFA charter holder and the founder of Sophos Wealth Management. So if we start with the 401k, one of the easiest places to optimize, um, Microsoft's gonna match 50% of their employees' contributions to their 401k plan. So the 2024 limit for employees under 50 is $23,000. So if you contribute the maximum to that, uh, Microsoft will match 11,500. So that's certainly one of the first areas you wanna take advantage of. That's kind of that free match. Microsoft's plan also allows for a uh, mega backdoor Roth. Now, this can allow you to save nearly 35,000 additional dollars into a Roth 401k. It's a very powerful savings tool. Um, so this is what this looks like. You first, you would make the $23,000 um, employee contribution. And I should note that you can make an extra 7,500 for employees 50 and over through the catch-up contribution. Um, you receive Amazon's match, so 11,500. And then the IRS limit, the overall limit for what can be put into a 401k plan for 2024 is actually $69,000. So how do we get from the 23 and 11 up to 69,000? That's where the mega backdoor Roth comes in. We make an additional after-tax contribution uh, equal to the difference between what's been contributed so far and the limit. So this is gonna be $34,500 for Microsoft employees. And you know the way this kind of works, if you're trying to do the mega backdoor Roth, so you max out your employee contribution first, and that can be either to a traditional 401k or to a Roth 401k, doesn't matter. Then you get your 50% match. Add those two together and look at the difference between where you're at and the overall limit. It's gonna be 34,500 for Microsoft. So then you're gonna make an after-tax contribution to the plan. What that means is you're not gonna get any immediate tax benefit for that. Unlike a traditional 401k contribution, this is not going to reduce your taxable income. However, because it's an after-tax contribution and Microsoft's plan allows you to do an in-plan conversion to a Roth, you don't have to pay any taxes on that conversion since you didn't get the tax benefit. And it allows you to get $34,500 additional into that Roth 401k. So that is a very powerful savings tool. I'm a big fan of it. Love that Microsoft lets employees do that. Next uh, thing you can take advantage of as a Microsoft employee is the employee stock purchase plan. So Microsoft employees can um, contribute up to 15% of their salary to this plan and it allows you to purchase Microsoft shares at a 10% discount to the stock's market value at the end of each quarter, end of each um, period, which is quarterly. Now, this is essentially free money. Um, you're getting a 10% discount, so if you sell those shares as soon as you get them, you lock that in, um, you know, it's just like a free boost to your salary. I'm a big fan of taking advantage of these. Uh, as long as you have the cash flow to be able to afford it, I would max out that 15% or the overall limit. Now, um, it's true. If you sell your shares as soon as you receive them in the Employee Stock Purchase Plan or ESPP, that's going to be taxed as ordinary income. And what, what I mean is the discount you receive will be taxed. I generally think this is the best way to go. And we'll talk about this with RSUs later. Um, the, the one reason people might consider not selling right away is you only pay in ordinary income tax on that discount in the year in which you sell it. So if you were to hold those shares into a future year, you would defer uh, the tax on that, on the, on the gain that you have to pay. Generally though, I just don't, I would say don't let the tax tail wag the investing dog. Let's just take that free money and take advantage of it now and not speculate on what the shares are gonna do in the future. Which takes me to my next point, Microsoft's RSUs. Especially highly compensated employees are gonna receive a large chunk of their overall comp from restricted stock units. Uh, on higher awards at RS, uh, on higher RSU awards at Microsoft, typically can invest over four years, 25% each year. And then the annual grants are typically gonna invest over five years, 20% a year. 
Um, I usually advise employees to sell those RSUs as soon as they vest. So think of it as, you know, from a tax perspective, it's exactly the same as if Microsoft paid you a cash bonus. So let's say you had $50,000 of RSUs vest, that's gonna be taxed as $50,000. If you sold those RSUs as soon as they vest, there's essentially no additional tax impact. I mean, it could be a small move in the shares that day, but it's not going to be material most of the time. So I typically tell employees, you know, if you have this envelope of cash, would the best use of it be putting it into Microsoft stock? Your future compensation is already highly tied to Microsoft stock. I mean, you've got unvested RSUs, likely to some extent your future um, salary will depend on Microsoft's fortunes. So already heavily tied to the employer. Doesn't really make sense to put way more chips into that one employer. And you see all the time, uh, employees who've worked at the same company for a long time, the vast majority of their liquid net worth tends to be tied up into that one company, especially if they have not been selling RSU. So from a planning perspective, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And again, I mean, imagine that envelope of cash is handed to you. Is Microsoft stock the very best investment in the ent entire universe on that date? Um, typically not, and typically, uh, you know, it's, you're going to have better investments out there that would better fit your investing risk tolerance goals, et cetera. Um, and you're already too concentrated in Microsoft. So that's just a blanket, um, blanket piece of advice for most people is to sell those shares as soon as they invest. Um, next program would be a deferred compensation program. So this is going to be available to level 67 and above. This is a very, very powerful tax planning uh, program, you know, especially if you're able to kind of look out into the future and see, yes, my taxable income is going to be much lower in retirement. Um, you know, this is an area that requires a lot of thought and planning into how to best maximize this. I mean, employees that can take advantage of this can defer up to 75% of their salary and 100% of their bonus. So, you know, a lot of thinking should go into what the right amount is. Can you live off your RSUs and take advantage of this to a high degree? Um, but if you do this the right way, you can potentially save tens of thousands of dollars on taxes. Um, but again, it kind of gets complicated. You got to do a lot of planning around current taxable income, future taxable income, cash flow, tax rates, so on and so forth. Uh, but this is a really nice perk and benefit. And, you know, it just goes to show Microsoft overall has a fantastic benefits program. Health insurance is, you know, this is a complicated area. Uh, it's going to really depend on your individual circumstances. Are you a heavy user of the healthcare system or somebody that's covered in your family, a heavy user, or are you young, relatively healthy, very few visits? Uh, so you're going to want to kind of take your situation into account as you look through the plans. But on average, uh, studies show that most people will save money with a high deductible health plan and an HSA attached to it. This is HSAs are one of my favorite accounts. They're considered triple tax advantaged. So when you put money into an HSA plan, you reduce your current taxable income. It's allowed to grow tax free. So you can put it in investments. It will grow. And the money that you take out of that account that is spent on qualified medical expenses, you don't pay any taxes on. So you get a tax advantage today, you get tax-free growth, and you pay no taxes in the future. Um, you know, this is basically the best account out there. Um, plus, Microsoft will contribute money on your behalf, anywhere from $1,000 up to $4,375. How much they contribute depends on whether you're covered just yourself or yourself and a spouse or yourself and a family and also what your level is. So it's going to be kind of a sliding scale based on those things. But uh, yeah, for the average person, this is probably going to give you the best financial outcome. But again, it's going to really depend on your health situation. Um, some of the other kind of miscellaneous benefits you can take advantage of. Uh, Microsoft does charitable donation matching and volunteer time. So they will match gifts you make to qualified charitable organizations up to $15,000. Also, if you do volunteer work, they will match it with a $25 per hour contribution to those qualified organizations. So really generous, um, great for those who are charitably minded and who volunteer. Um, you know, Microsoft also provides life insurance up to two times employee salaries. That's no cost. Uh, if you need supplemental insurance, you might want to just look for cheap options outside the plan. Disability insurance, they'll provide up to 60% of an employee's salary, up to 15,000 per month. 
Um, so, you know, just kind of nice overall benefits package. And they even have some other kind of thrown in miscellaneous benefits. So you get a gem or wellness reimbursement up to $1,500 per year. Uh, they pay relocation fees for employees. For parental leave, they'll give 20 weeks of paid time for birth mothers and 12 weeks for all other new parents, which would include adoptions and foster uh, parents. So a lot of great benefits for Microsoft. This is a great benefits package and there's a lot of opportunities for you to take advantage of. Uh, I encourage you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and please share it with anybody else that you think might find it useful. Thanks a lot for tuning in today.